Hey everyone, welcome to Adobe Max. Thank you so much for being here. If you don't know who I am, I'm Adam Bosley, but I go by Adam the Illustrator online. I love to illustrate cute characters with uplifting messages like the ones you see here. And I also love to showcase tips and tricks on how I navigate Adobe Illustrator. That's what we're gonna be doing today. So what I'll show you is the way I used to do things and my new and improved way of how I do things that I just find smooths out the process and makes things for the most part still fully editable. So let's jump right into it. And firstly, we're gonna start with this overlapping text effect that I absolutely love. And the reason I love it is because it is so cool and fully editable. Now, the way I used to do this effect is I would type out my word, I would go over to the character window, I would go negative 170 on the tracking, so it's overlapping. I would go to my stroke, add a new white stroke there, and then with it selected, I would go Command Shift O to create an outline, and there we go, we have the effect. Now, the only thing about this is I can't adjust the words, and that's no fun. But I'm gonna introduce you to my favorite tool, my favorite window in Adobe Illustrator these days, which is the appearance panel. But let's get our tracking set up again at negative 170, and then we're gonna select the word, we're gonna go window, appearance window, and this is where the magic starts to happen. So we're gonna go down to the bottom left here, effects, add a new effect, pathfinder, trim, effect, path, offset path. Within the offset path, just make sure, so what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that your document is in pixels because if it's in inches, this will not work with the settings that I'm giving you here. So we're gonna go negative one pixel and we're gonna go join round just cause I think it's fun and we're gonna press okay. And now we have an effect that is so cool and fully editable. You can also edit the tracking on here. So I can go over to the tracking, I can tighten it up a little bit. I know so cool is two words, not one. I can adjust that there. And I can also change the font. Sometimes the fonts work, sometimes they don't. So just mess around with it and see what works best for you. Now, I am an illustrator and I illustrated this character that I absolutely love. And I wanna redraw this arm and I use a tablet. So I like using the paintbrush tool and I'm gonna redraw this arm with the paintbrush tool, but I'm a little jagged today for some reason. My, my lines aren't that smooth. Now I can go in, I can simplify it and all that stuff. But before I do that, I like to, I'll delete this line. I'll go over to my paintbrush tool. I'll double click it and over here, the fidelity, I'm just gonna move this towards smooth. I like it around here. And now, even if I am still a little janky on my lines, it should snap into place. And I absolutely love that. Now, if there is still a bunch of anchor points, I just pressed a direct selection tool to pull that up. But with, with the selection tool, I will right click, simplify, and I'll probably move it towards two. And with my direct selection tool again, I'll adjust the toggles just to what we like, something like that. Now, I've always used the paintbrush tool because back in the day, the pencil tool, when you draw, you would draw it with this blue line. And I did not love that. I was like, why am I drawing with a blue line? But something new that just came to Adobe is if you double click this pencil tool, we're gonna slide the fidelity to smooth as well. But over here, we have live preview. You click on that, press okay. And just like that, we now have a black live preview. And I can go over here, I can adjust the stroke and boom, I love that. That's one of my favorite tools nowadays. I might start using the pen tool often. <laughs> um, let's jump into adding color to our characters. So you're not gonna believe it, but the way I used to add colors to my character is I would have my color palette and I would get this shape out here. I would send it to back or I would color in this blue stem or sorry, not blue, this green stem like this. And I would just trace around the whole character 
adding color. Oops, not that, sorry. And then I would add color, send it to the back, or put it on a different layer. And I would do that for everything. And that is time consuming. It took me forever. That was the way I did it. I know it's not the right way. So how I do it now is I want to keep a copy of this character that has all the, all the strokes intact. So I'm going to, I'm going to duplicate it just by sliding it over, holding down option shift, and I'm going to select it. I'm going to go object, expand appearance, object, expand. And what I love to do is I like to use the Pathfinder tool, which is in window Pathfinder. Pathfinder tool will pop up here and I love to unite it. Now, all I need to do is with it selected, press K for the live paint bucket tool, click in there just to activate it. And now I can select any color I want. I'm gonna go white for the, oh, white, cloud's already white, sorry. But I would fill it in white just so when I do slide it over, when I do slide it over here, it's filled in white. And if I have a background, so on and so forth. Pink socks, yellow smileys. I'm just eyedropper tool on the yellow with eye, selecting the color I want, and then using K, oops, using K to color in what I need. And I would just continue on with that. Nice, easy, and I love that. So much smoother, so much quicker, and then I can add my shadows and all that fun stuff. Now, something I'm sure we've all done before is we have our color palette here, right? And I want to select this color and I want to get all the details for it for my, my, swatch pen, my swatches, right? So I'm going to click it. And I know you've done this before. Command Shift 4 to pop up a screenshot. I would screenshot it and I would drag it in. This isn't the right color code, but you get the point. And I would do that for all of them and then text all of them out, which is such a hassle. Adobe's helping us out here. Select your color palette. Go to Window, Swatches, for our swatch panel to pop up. You can create a new group, new swatch group. And I'm just going to say Adams Colors. Press OK. Now, there's two ways to do this. I can select colors by going by selecting the color and holding down command to select other colors, or I can select my, my Adams color swatch group by just clicking there. I'll go to the hamburger menu. I'm going to create swatch info. I like getting my hex code, my RGB and CMYK and boom, just like that. Press OK and you have all the info needed for your swatches. Now, something that people have asked me in the past is, Adam, how do I adjust the font? This is my workaround. I go object, expand, press OK, select it again, object, ungroup all, and then I'll just select all these. And here, I can change the font to whatever I want. Obviously, there's some overlapping here, but you kind of get the point of how to do it. Go to object, expand, ungroup all, and then you can start adjusting the font to, of your choice. So quick and so easy. I absolutely love that. Now, we're going to be wrapping up soon, but something that is always an issue for me is I love to create this little capsule around my text. And I will change it to a stroke just so you can see it. Now I want to align it. I'm going to go, I'm going to tap on that to highlight the yes, sir, and align it by going align, align. And you can see if you look real close, this and this are way off. Like there's a big gap there and I don't love that. So a quick way, a quick workaround around that is to go to your align, go window, align, go to the hamburger menu. Go to align to glyph bounds, point text. We're going to select this again. We're going to make this the lead character. We're going to align horizontal, vertically align center, and boom. Just like that, 
we have it aligned perfectly. And I love that. Let's take it one step further. Let's say we want to write something else. I'd have to adjust this line every time. And I'm not sure if the width here and the width here are going to be the same. There's a workaround for that. So what we're going to do is we are going to make it look like this. Hey, hi. <laughs> we're going to make it look like this. And that's fairly easy. Oops, I need to select a new text here. Sorry about that. Let's go. Yes, sir. I'm going to go truck wide. I like, oops, I like truck wide. Let's just go medium there. Okay, perfect. So what we're going to do, this is a little bit of a steppy one. <laughs> steppy. This is a little bit of a process. <laughs> and we're going to go to effect. We're going to go to path outline object. And just watch carefully here. You see how this bounding box is large here and small here. We're going to go to our align window again. We're going to go to the hamburger menu, use preview bounds. See how that tightened that up there. Now we have a nice tight box there, as you can see. And all we need to do now is we're going to go back to our window appearance and we're going to add a new stroke. It's going to be black. It's going to go on the yes, sir, right now. But with the stroke selected, go to go to effect. Go to convert the shape, rounded rectangle, and there you have it. I am going to give it some extra width because I like a little bit of extra width there. And I'm also going to add some extra height because I'm a little short guy. And then we're going to add some pixels here. And it does look a little off. You see this little clipping thing here. I don't love that. That's strange. But I can double click in the effect there. And I can just bring down this corner radius. Oops, I have to select it, <laughs> double click, corner radius, and there it is. So that's at about 53 pixels. You'll have to adjust accordingly, like it is a little finicky, but the fun thing about it is now I can do my text like so cool, and it moves with it. And I absolutely love that because I use this feature so often. And it's just such a cool feature, in my opinion. Now, last but not least, we're going to make this drop shadow text effect. That is, once again, wow, because it's fully editable. And I know it's clipping there. That is OK. What we can do is make it not caps and just go like this. And it's beautiful. So the way I used to do it, and the way a lot of people, I think, still do it, is I would select this text. Option shift to duplicate it down, drag it down. I would send it to the back by command shift open bracket. I would select both. I would go to object. I probably already have my settings here. <laughs> I would go to blend options. I would go to. Let's go back here. So I would select both. I would go to object, go to blend, blend options. I'll move the spacing to specified steps and I already have my settings in there. I like 150. Press OK. With it still selected, go to Object, Blend, Make, and boom. Now, this effect does work, but if I want to say something like, that's pretty cool, you see how it has this weird effect there? It's because I'm only adjusting the top text and not the bottom text which is not great. So the workaround is once again, with so cool selected, we're going to use our best friend, the appearance panel. So I'm going to go to window appearance, I can do F6. I just never do that. And I'm going to go to effects, distort and transform, transform. And we're going to mess around here with our move column. Once again, make sure your document is in pixels because if it's in inches, it'll work a little bit different. 
but I'm gonna go point two pixels. It's gonna move horizontal point two pixels and it's gonna move vertically two point two pixels and it's gonna move them 150 copies. It's gonna make 150 copies and we're gonna press okay and boom. Just like that, we have so cool. That is awesome. And we can also, the reason it's so awesome is we can also change the text to something like that. I can now go back to my character window and I can adjust the tracking just so every text is, a little, every font is a little bit different. So this is just a way to adjust and make it work for you. Anyways, I think that's all we have today. Thank you so much for being here. I hope you learned something new today. And if you want, give me a follow on Instagram at Adam underscore the illustrator. Thank you. Peace.